Welcome back, you're watching Power News. And in today's episode, we are discussing IT and power distribution and smart grid. Coming to our APDRP, which is underway and states are in different stages of implementation. What are the major challenges that states have faced and what lessons have they learned in these two years? The rationale under which IT is being implemented is that you need basic measurement. Mm -hmm. uh, that which cannot be measured cannot be managed. And in the power system, we know for years together we've had this problem of not being able to manage or read the energy through from production through to the consumption. You know, there are several leakages in measurement itself. Let's not talk about energy leakages. So in that sense, IT was supposed to bring in the entire backbone whereby measurement and baselines are established, which will be the first step for any improvements in the future. Uh, the second part of bringing in flexibility in the grid operations, which is what Smart Grid is all about, is actually a second level of layering of uh, you know, solutions onto that. So I think if that's the feedback, then we need to go back and relook our APDRP implementation. I'm sure in some states it's working out fine, in some states it's not uh, doing fine. That's a matter of uh, implementation in various states. But it is a very, very important program as far as uh, the future of Indian power sector is it's concerned, concerned. And therefore that's, that's uh, very much the backbone. What do you think how the government should plan to tackle smart grid challenges in Indian context? As I said, the smart grid is a, not a unique technology. It is a concept uh, and the integration of uh, various technologies is required and uh, right from generation distribution. And now uh, to integrate this today, whatever investment we're doing, uh, one, one technology fellow cannot independently look his technology in a smart grid. So they have to be integrated, keeping view the requirement of other man in future and that will be integrated to so down the line that man, that other man can also enter so we have to conceptually develop a smart grid in such a manner that investment uh, in the long run it will help you long not today the investment which made today will help you in the long run and other technology can be integrated to this as kapil mohan said if you think smart grid is something any load in the consumer installation control we are long way so he said it is it initiative the smart grid, the present stage is IT initiative in the power sector. If you take that into, if that definition is taken, probably we can do it in another two, three years. So if you are thinking of the entire domestic you know, household can control their gadgets using this one, probably we are a long way to go. Mr. Sela. I mean, today IT is there in every aspect of our life. And uh, in power, it is going to be, it is already there, it will be there. And we just cannot run away from every consumer's uh, wish to get connected. So uh, smart grid is going to move. The question is when, how, what are the priorities? Mr. Patnaik. Having the solution set, the technology solution set, as well as the solution set from a practical standpoint needs to evolve in the Indian context as far as smart grid interventions are concerned. Uh, but having said that, we should recognize the fact that the vendor ecosystem created by the American Recovery Act and elsewhere uh, has brought down costs and of various elements worldwide. And therefore, we should be able to take advantage of it and develop our own system in such a fashion that we are able to bring in penetration of some of these elements which are contextual and which are beneficial to the Indian environment. Mr. Mohan. See, today is the creation of the basic infrastructure. And it's something like, you know, an iceberg. Uh, quite, a, quite a bit of the investments have to be done up front. And uh, the benefits will start flowing once those are fully operational. How much of the value we derive out of this enabling infrastructure will depend on, uh, on how much we have been able to integrate, how much interoperable our system is, and how uh, flexible uh, our managerial systems would be in the future, you know, to take advantage of these things. At present, we need to be sure that the enabling infrastructure which we are putting in terms of the ITs, IT, ICT and all is future-proof because these are large investments and they are interoperable. We don't, do not get logged into some technology uh, paths or tracks and, and also, uh, as has been said very rightly, to have uh, something which is embedded into the Indian context, you know, uh, state of importation and transplantation will not work. With this, uh, we, I, I see that uh, over the years, the ICT penetration in the power sector will only increase. There is no other way out of that. Thank you. Well, with this, we come to an end of today's discussion. I'd like to thank all the panelists for joining us here in Power News. Thank you so much. 
Do join us next week for more news and updates. Till then, goodbye and take care.